What's up Los Angeles and everyone out there? Thank you for joining us today. This is Casey Diaz, host of the Shot Dollar Podcast. Hey man, um, if you enjoyed the Sandy Esparza um, episode, you're in for a treat because um, you're about to get informed. And um, I think there's gonna be a big bright light on some darkness in the area of human trafficking here with our guest. I wanna thank every single one of you that has joined us. Um, those of you that contribute and sponsor us and those that constantly donate. Without you, as you know, we have become a listener sponsored show now. This is what we do. And uh, in order to do that, um, I mean, the, the people that we bring here on this uh, uh, forum they're pretty interesting people and uh, that live the life that they preach. Uh, this, these are people that are in warfare. They're involved in uh, putting a dent in the uh, kingdom of darkness. And, and, and that's what it's all about. When you're a Christian, if you're just sitting down, if all you're doing is sitting in, in a pew, warming it up, what are you really doing? And I think that it's important that you know, as the as that day approaches, those of you that are Christians, you know what day I'm talking about. Um, it's getting darker and darker, and uh, the signs are all over the place. The next thing on the map is this rapture, which if you're a Christian, you're, I mean, we're, let's, let's roll, we're ready, let's, let's do it, right? <coughs> if you're not a Christian, um, this is a great time to ask God, what am I doing? What are, my, what are your plans for me? And getting a, into a relationship with Christ immediately. I think that that's, that's important. Um, with us today, <clears throat> you know, if, if somebody would have told me that I would be sitting with certain folks today, uh, I, I would have, one, I wouldn't have believed it. Two, I, I would have been, you, know, you guys are beside yourself. But this is what God does. And uh, I was just talking to our guest here of how God is a chess player when it comes to life. He moves the way he moves, he wants to move. And he's sovereign, he's supreme. And well, he does whatever he wants to do. And we need to be on board with whatever he wants to do. Uh, that's just, you know, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Today I have with us, um, Kevin Malone. And Kevin Malone, he's the CEO of KidsNotForSale.org. He also co-founded and is the CEO of U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking and the former man uh, general manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. So um, for those of you that are Angelinos, I mean, when you hear the word Dodgers, we're on board. That's it. You know, it doesn't take much. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for being here with us for your time. I know that you could have been anywhere else, but you chose this podcast, and I want to say uh, it's an honor to have you here, sir. Well, Casey, thank you for the opportunity. It's a, a blessing to be here with you, to hear about your story, what God's done in your life, and how he's uh, brought you from the darkness into his marvelous light so that you can point people to uh, his son, our Lord and Savior. So I'm just humbled to be here, and. Um, you know, Los Angeles has a special place in my heart. I lived here a couple different times, but the most recent time was with the Dodgers, as you know, and ran the Dodgers from 98 through 2001. And, and then God's called me to do some other things. I moved to Las Vegas, be five years ago next month. And, and he called me there to fight child sex trafficking, to make people aware that we had a huge problem. Our kids were being targeted. Uh, most people turn a blind eye to this issue because it's so evil, it's so dark. But I think uh, God's called me to shine a light on it and do everything I can to protect uh, boys, girls, and women, and men from being bought and sold uh, for sex. You know, uh, earlier we played a clip with uh, Derek Carr from your website. Um, the information in this three minute clip is astounding. It floors you because, you know, the regular Joe, the regular person, they wake up, they go to work, 
They come back from work, spend some some dinner time, some supper, turn on the news or a show, whatever it is, and that's the end of the day. But when it comes to human trafficking, it's nonstop. It's a business that's been created by pretty evil folks, and it doesn't have a punch out card. It just continues. I know that you know. I'd love to you know. Before we got into the interview, we were talking to uh, my business partner about baseball, and and it's uh, you know <laughs> cracking jokes in, in the whole yard. I want to know because you come from a baseball background. You went to seminary, but you come from a, a baseball background. How does one jump from that to this? Well, it's definitely a calling of God. So in 2013, my son was a junior at the University of Southern California, went to the University of Melbourne on a study abroad business, uh, abroad program. He came home and uh, he overdosed. and was declared brain dead. Uh, in 2013. Uh, he was at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica and uh, the morning I found him uh, beginning to turn blue and we took him to the hospital or they came and got him and they told us he was dying, uh, that your son's dying, there's nothing we can do. Uh, and I started crying out to God, praying, texting and emailing every man and woman of God that I knew, pray for my son, it doesn't look good. It looks like uh, he's going to die. And by the grace of God, he stayed alive for a few more days. And they kept telling us to pull the feeding tube, starve him to death, that if he ever woke up he, from his coma, he would be a vegetable and wouldn't want to live like that. And uh, after about 12 days, they kicked us out of that hospital. We went to UCLA. It was there about 10 days, two weeks. They told us the same thing. We air ambulanced him to Inglewood, Colorado, to uh, Craig Hospital Traumatic Brain Institute. He was in a coma 60 days, and by the grace and mercy of God, he woke him up. He brought him back to life a year and a half later. Uh, he graduated USC, and when he woke up from his coma, he couldn't see, he couldn't talk, he couldn't walk. And uh, lo and behold, by the, by the power and mercy and grace of God, he performed a miracle on my son is doing well now. And here's what, where I tie that in, Casey. So uh, a little bit after that, I was praying, God, what do you want me to do with my life? I could have done a lot of different things, thought about getting back into baseball. And, and, and God said, he didn't say this audibly, but I heard him say in my spirit, in my heart, I gave you your son back. I want you to go get and bring back other sons and daughters of parents that kids have been trafficked or being trafficked that have either been runaway kids, uh, abducted kids, kids that have been groomed and are being sold for sex in America. I want you to go bring their kids back to, to the parents. And I heard that clearly. And since that point, Casey, in, in 2014, I've dedicated my life because God's called me to do this, to do everything possible to protect kids. That means changing laws at the federal and the state levels. That means basically working with covert ops that do rescues. That means opening homes, safe homes. We had the only traffic boy safe home in America. What people don't know is up to 36% of all American kids that are sold and, and trafficked for sex are little boys. So we opened uh, four years ago, the, the first and only boys safe home for traffic boys. And uh, we've been able to help 34 boys in four years go through our wraparound services program. Uh, we do, you know, it's not just about awareness. Awareness is important. And once people hear, they need to respond. I always do awareness with a call to action. If you know about it now, you can't ignore it anymore. And there's something you can do. Everyone can do something in this fight. And what I try to do, Casey, is, is not do it all myself because I've been prone to be kind of a lone ranger type guy, is I'm trying to create a warrior, a, a group of warriors around the country and what we do is we will train individuals, no matter where, you, where you're at, what state you're in, to be an abolitionist, to go and fight in your city, your town, your community. And we will teach you, train you, and equip you to be a warrior in this fight. And then we also have a trafficking free zone where we get communities. Basically, we teach everyone in the community what they can do in their own sector of, of life, be it business, be it 
through ministry, be it through a hospital, be it through city council, through law enforcement. And we're basically approaching this with a strategic plan. This isn't just, oh, what are we gonna do today? No, we have a plan and we believe you, you, you plan your work and then you work your plan. So we have to be prepared and strategic because this is a spiritual battle. This is spiritual warfare. We're fighting the enemy. I can't think of anything worse on the planet than men raping little kids. And it's happening to tremendous numbers that people don't want to think about it. It's so evil, it's so dark, but we have a huge problem in America with men paying to rape our kids. So God's called me. He knew I liked to fight. I've always been a fighter and uh, he's put me in a, the fight of my life. And I'm trying to do everything I can to, one, protect kids from getting caught up into this, but then two, once they're in it, figure out ways to get them out. And then three, uh, provide restoration, rehabilitation, because the services they need, they, they have PTSD. They've been traumatized like a veteran coming back yeah. from war. They've been in the war of life. They've got 10, 15, 20 times a day, men have been paying to rape them. You can imagine, and they're violent. A lot of it is violence. So uh, I'm doing what God's called me to do. A lot of days I'm angry. I need to pray a lot because uh, there's some days I don't really have uh, the right attitude towards these men that are doing this. And, and seeing the faces of kids that have been sexually abused, exploited, and trafficked, is, uh, it's heartbreaking. You know, and, and it is heartbreaking. And, it, and I understand where that anger comes from. <laughs> I mean, who, who can watch that or, or be informed about that and just kind of just, you know. That's the thing, Casey, I, I, I get, the, what makes me the angriest is, is, is yeah, the traffickers and pimps and the buyers, obviously, yeah. but it's people that don't do anything. Yeah. If you hear about this, I'm not asking you to write a major check or I'm, all you, you can, you can one, pray if you know Jesus is your yeah. one's pray, it's because it's darkness, we're fighting the enemy. Two, you can write letters, you can call your legislators, your senators, uh, you can get make sure at your school they have the curriculum, the training, that we're training our kids what this looks like. What does grooming look like? What does being recruited look like? What is an appropriate relationship between a young girl and an older man? Make sure that our kids are being prepared and, and, and taught how to stop this from happening and, and, and to see it in their friends. And parents are, are always so busy, uh, they don't always know what's going on. A lot of this is done through social media. Most of the boys, the 34 boys that we had in our, our safe home in, in Florida, were, tr were, were groomed and recruited on gaming devices, like Fortnite. The, yeah. the ability to communicate, there's all these predators on our kids' gaming devices that are trying to establish relationships with our boys and, and our girls, and they do it in different ways. But our kids are under attack, people. Our kids are under attack by this evil, and we have to do everything we can to protect them. And, and I think it has to do a lot with uh, like parents. Uh, parents need to be well aware of those devices that you're purchasing for these kids, for your kids. It's important that <coughs> you have full control of who they're talking to, passwords, you know, that device, you bought it as a parent for your kid, you have the right and you have the responsibility to monitor what is before their eyes. Uh, I, and, and I agree with kids. I, I've got to say to parents out there, you can't be too busy. Your kids no. are your priority. You know, I, I'm guilty of that. When I was with the Dodgers and then with the Orioles and the Expos prior to that, I was a workaholic. I wasn't a very good husband or father. I've had to repent and ask God to forgive me for putting all my energies, attention, and focus on being successful in the world of baseball. And, and, and I'm thankful that God gave me a second chance with my wife and my kids so that I didn't lose them in this pursuit of worldliness and this pursuit of success. So parents out there, I don't care how busy you are. I don't care what you're doing. If it's not focused on your family, your spouse, your husband, your wife, and your kids, you're missing the mark. We have to protect them. They're under attack. And it, you have to be intentional, Casey, about it. You can't just hope they learn something. That, they're learning the, long, the wrong things at school now. Oh, we absolutely. see what's going across uh, the country, what's happening. Yeah. They're being taught all this, quote, crazy stuff. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's wrong. It's it, wrong. It's untruthful. So parents, you have to, and grandparents, 
and aunts and uncles and community members. See, that's the great thing, Casey. I remember about growing up, you know, I'm old now, 65, but back in the day, communities took care of everybody's kids. It wasn't just about, well, those two are mine, so I'm just looking out for those two. No, they looked out for every kid in the block, every yeah. kid in the neighborhood, every kid at the park. We protected each other's kids. That's gone these days. Yeah. We're too self-absorbed. We're too caught up into our own life, and we want what we want. We get what we want. You know, just do it. That, that don't work. You know, the biggest thing I've learned in the last few years is the most important thing where I got the most satisfaction, where I get the most gratification is when I help somebody else. Not about when I get something for me and when I've done something to accomplish something. And that's great. I'm not saying that's always bad. But when you do something to impact the life of somebody else, when you make somebody else, you move the needle and make a difference in somebody else's life, be it a kid or anybody, it's there's nothing that i found other than sitting at the feet of Jesus and worshiping him that compares. You know, helping somebody else. And I speak a lot of times, Casey, in different places, in different settings, in different environments. And that's my message now is, hey, yeah, it's great that you're making a lot of money. Hey, it's great that you're doing this, or it's great that you reached the top in this. And But where do you get your true satisfaction and gratitude? It's, it's about giving and serving others and making a difference in the lives of other people. There is nothing that compares to that. You know, I was just having a conversation with a friend uh, in Florida. He's a retired FBI agent. And uh, I'm flying out to uh, Utah, Sandy, Utah, pretty soon here. And it's a gang prevention uh, program that's out there. They're coming together, two uh, major LA gang clients that have made it out to Utah. Big problem in, in the schools uh, over there. And th this, uh, this, this friend of mine, he says to me, you know, uh, I, I need to assemble a prayer team for you because what you're doing is you're hitting the enemy where it hurts and he's not gonna just sit there and allow this to happen because when you're changing if, if your goal is not about the money it's not about success those things you need them they're there yada 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 but I, I love what you just said when you impact somebody when you are able to by the by the grace of God by the Holy Spirit to redirect the path of someone who's in danger and can cause even more danger. Mm -hmm. If you can say something to them, invest in a person, in a young person, and say, hey, I've been there, done that, bought the shirt. There's an emptiness at the end of this road. Mm -hmm. There's there's nothing, there's nothing worth it. And, and he, he, he said this to me, the FBI agent, he said, you do know that your life is in danger. You, you have to know that. Mm -hmm. And I said this to him, I said, you know, uh, I get it. I understand all that. But the cause is more worth than the consequence. Mm -hmm. I, when I was in a gang, I yelled that gang name out. I wasn't ashamed of being who I was at that time. How much more so mm -hmm. for the calling of Christ Amen. and we need to be doers mm -hmm. and I, I think this is why I'm already like man my respect to you is well, thank you <laughs> well you just call, you talked about you, you're triggering a lot of thoughts in my mind I think about you know being doers of the word not hearers only and I get aggravated a lot with the church uh, you know that they talk a good game don't always live it don't really understand obedience. It's like John MacArthur, my old pastor, told me one time, partial obedience is disobedience. Yeah. And one, a couple important things. One is that the first person that we hired for the United States Institute Against Human Trafficking six years ago was a prayer warrior. We hired this lady out of Asia. She prays 12, 14, 16 hours a day for each of us, for all of our causes, what we're doing. My so goodness. it's very first, prayer warrior. And then everywhere I go, when I meet people that say, hey, well, what can I do, what can I help you? You know, hey, I want to write you a check. Hey, just pray for me. If you want to write a check, that's great. But so prayers. The other thing is, uh, is, is, is I've learned a lot. And there's a lot of people out there listening that know people that are depressed or sad. We're going through a phase right now where the youth of America are really depressed after coming out of COVID, being separated, being isolated, being treated in a way they never, never realized uh, what it was, what was going to happen to them. 
is I have learned and I have seen when you feel when you're depressed or you're or you're feeling really really sad it's because you're thinking about yourself and what's going on to get out of that go serve there's people mm -hmm. out there that are in a worse condition than you are I saw it I've seen it all over when people are, are in a bad place if you can take your eyes off of yourself yeah. and go serve and go make a difference in somebody else it changes your whole outlook so all you folks out there and all you young people that are hearing this get involved in a way to help others you know if there's bullying going on at your school if you're still in high school or even if you're in college and you see you know things happening be nice be kind treat people <coughs> that maybe aren't the cool kids or the yeah. kids that look different or act different you don't know what's going on in their life yeah. love on these kids or if you don't understand the word love like them a lot be nice to kids and, and just try to help people. It's it's a, we need that now. We need the hope in this country. This country is in a bad state. Things are going on that have never gone on. Everything's under attack that we believe in. We've got you know a lot of people fighting to, to hurt our kids, exploit our kids in different ways. So we if you we got to stand up, Casey. We got to show some courage and some some strength and some faith in God that we can do this. We're, we're, we're more than conquerors That's through right. him. Yeah. And you know, uh, those of you that are listening in, um, thank you so much for, for uh, sticking around. Sex crimes don't, do, doesn't just happen out in the community. It also ha happens, unfortunately, it shouldn't, but it has, and it does, in places of worship, mm -hmm. in churches. And I'll share with you, uh, there was a church where, one of our first churches where I was a member. Uh, you know, the Christian church tends to give the benefit of the doubt, which it should, mm -hmm. to those that are visiting members. But we meet, we must also be, we're, we're told that we're supposed to be gentle as doves, but also wise as serpents. Mm -hmm. And we can't leave loose ends and, and, and think that, well, the next person is just going to be okay. In this first, the, this first church uh, that I, where I met my wife, the, the Bible was being preached. We learned a lot, but some things weren't in place. And I'm a big, big, I'm big on this, that if you're a church, you need to, if anybody is volunteering in any fashion form with children or teens, mm -hmm. you need to have background checks on volunteers and on your staff. Don't be naive and think that because so-and-so is the cousin of so-and-so, so therefore so-and-so is okay. No. Mm -hmm. know the, who you're dealing with who is coming into the house of faith this church failed this church failed and, and something horrendous happened where children were being molested mm -hmm. Kevin man when I found out I sat in my car man and I was so angry I come from a gang background where that stuff back then you did that, and we found out. Mm -hmm. You're done. And I sat down there, and I'm I'm born again at this moment. It took the Holy Spirit to stop me. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Lord used the fact that I had just got married, the fact that I had a one-year-old, you know, to take care of. Had it not been for those two elements in my life at that time, I would have took this man's life without, and I know me, I know me. I sat, man, Kevin, I sat in this car for probably an hour, angry. And I know, when you said angry, I know, I, man, I, I feel it. I'm mean, even just talking about it, you know? And I had to chase detectives down. I had to, I had, to, I had calls from these kids saying, are the police doing anything? Is pastor uh, seeing uh, is he in contact with detectives? I called the, the, the pastor and the pastor hasn't even called the followed up on the detectives. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I got a little, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I got, I got a little in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're not doing nothing? 
somebody, one of these kids is going to get killed mm -hmm. because you're doing nothing. And I called them. I called the detective. Got made sure within about three hours, this detectives and they had even, they had even moved that case from Van Nuys to downtown LA to the sex crimes uh, unit over there by LAPD. Within three hours or so, that detective was calling me back and saying, would you like to be part? We're about to go and do, make the arrest. The evidence was there. This is where action, yes, we're, we're, we're called to, to love, we're called to, but we're also called to, to action. Yeah, well, I think you said in the flesh, so I battle with that a lot. So I, I, <coughs> I think what you were describing to me is, is righteous anger. I mean, people always say to me, just let God take care of stuff. Just let God do this, just let God do that. My responsibility is to pray, but God gave us hands and feet. God uses people yeah. to make a difference. You know, I'm praying all the time in sex trafficking around the world, raise up men or women to protect these kids, to stop this from happening, to rescue these kids and to bring the restoration that they need. But what frustrates me is man's not stepping up and yeah. doing, and I, it takes men like you, what you did at the church. And my message to the listeners as well is, Trust no one, exactly. no teacher, no coach, no pastor, because you, you, unless you know for sure, and it's hard to know for sure, but I agree with you, there, there's no accountability anymore, Casey. Mm -hmm. Everyone does what they want. No one's holding anyone accountable. We can do whatever we want. Everybody lies. I mean, we are in a battle, a fight, and I feel like some days I'm, like you guys were talking earlier when we met before we got on the podcast here about certain things happen in your life and you just you're worn out you're just exhausted or yeah. or or the, or the spirit of god comes over you and you're trying to figure out okay god what am i supposed to do and, and how do i go with the flow with the spirit and, and do what you want me to do uh i always you know used to i'm young older now I, I don't move as quick i always try to get out in front of god and run and say god you need to follow me you need to follow me because I'm going to get out here and do. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be like more like Martha and less like Mary. I want to sit at the feet of Jesus and worship and hear from Him. But I, you know, I know Martha. I, I'm a Martha-like person. I want to get out there and do, do, do. Yeah. But I've just got to sit and hear from God. I cry out to God, lead me, guide me, open up doors. May I have Your favor. Just I need You to guide me and keep the wrong doors closed and open the right doors so I can do what You've called me to do. And I just ask everybody to pray now that's listening to this. Pray for me. I need wisdom. I need guidance. I need the favor of God. I need, I just need God. I can't, I need Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit to, to, to help me accomplish what God's called me to do. You know, as Jesus said, I, I must be about my father's business. I, I'm trying, I'm a, the father's business to me is children. And how can we not do everything possible to protect kids? And I get this all the time, and this aggravates me. This is to white vanilla America, the suburb folks out there listening. Don't be telling me that these kids aren't your kids because most of these kids being trafficked are black or brown kids. They're either African-American or Hispanic, and you're turning, it, you're turning your head the other way because you don't think they're your kids. Hey, vanilla America. Hey, church in the suburbs, listen up. Kids are kids. I don't care what color they are, what background. These are kids. If you read your Bible, you know the love that Jesus had for children. Suffer unto me. Come to me, all, all you children. And, it, it, and it's our responsibility to protect kids. I don't care what color, where they're at, what their socioeconomic background is. You have to fight for kids everywhere. That's our responsibility as followers of Jesus, or just a normal human being. Even if you don't know Jesus yet as your Lord and Savior, you have a responsibility to protect and care for children. Bottom line, period. Wow. <laughs> wow, man. You know, <laughs> I love your, your, your vigor and, and, and your... My wife says I'm too passionate sometimes. I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you don't have to live with me. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Kevin, on, on, on that note, man, um, is there a story that, mm. that, that stands out that you're <coughs> part of that just kept you up at night? Well, there's a couple of those. I'll, I'll give you one about a little boy. So... There was a little boy in Florida, he was 10 years old, and he had been sold by his father, 
by his daddy since he was four years old for sex. So this 10 year old boy, he was up in Jacksonville and, and one of my uh, got guys that worked with me went up to get him and pick him up. And uh, and right when the little boy got in the car, he, he, he didn't, he had a, he had a, plastic garbage bag with his, all his, his, his life's possessions in him. So he gets in the car with, with my, the guy that worked for me and he looks at my friend John that was driving the, the, the car and he looks and goes, are you a nice man? Basically, what are you going to do to me? Because wow. he's always been abused by men. So anyway, we get him back to our, our home north of Tampa, our safe home, and we just start loving on him. He had never had a birthday. He couldn't really write. He couldn't really read very well really had never been to school. And so we threw him a birthday party on his birthday. We started just loving on him, providing for him. And we had him for a year, I think roughly a year. And then his mom had also been trafficked by her husband, by the dad of this kid. And she finally got healthy enough where they could be reunited. But here's a, how, how can a, a man, first of all, a father of a son, sell your son to be abused and exploited and, and raped. Uh, I, I can't comprehend that, one. And then two, who are the men out there that are paying to rape a 10-year-old boy, a four-year-old boy, a six-year-old boy, a seven-year-old girl? So I have a lot of those types of stories, but one story that's, that's pertinent here, to, I think in Los Angeles, is uh, a, a survivor friend of mine, a gal by the name of Ori Freeman. She's from LA. Uh, she's now on my board, the United States Institute Against human trafficking. She's a tremendous speaker, a great survivor, loves Jesus, really running hard after the Lord. And she was sold for sex from 11 years of age to 14 and a half, 15 years, right here on the streets of LA. And I basically have been able to capture her story. And we're going to start putting that out there. But uh, her name is Ori Freeman and, and look her up and look what she's been through. Now look what God's doing in her life. And she really has a great love for the Lord. And in and, and, and last year here in L.A. at the Super Bowl, I was in charge of all the human trafficking efforts. So I worked with law enforcement. I worked with the nonprofits. And basically, it's always in South Central L.A. Yeah. Uh, and we were able to put together uh, some operations that, that one went after the traffickers, the pimps, and the, and the buyers. Uh, and then we also were able to <coughs> rescue some children, some women. So... LA, you got a big problem here. Uh, and unfortunately, there's some influential people involved in it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that can make a difference and looking the other way. Uh, it's ugly and it's dark and it's a big fight. And most people don't have the, the, the gumption, I'll say, to get in this fight because one, you gotta be prayed up and you need, you, you need to be right with the Lord. You need to be in the word of God yeah. I got to stay in the word case because I, I can get off the tracks really easy and go do some crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, but so as, as I run after the Lord, the Lord has me, you know, showing me things, have, using me in different ways. But I get frustrated a lot. So anybody out there that's a prayer warrior, please pray for me and, and, and my ministries and, and what God's called me to do. I, I could. Uh, there, there's so many. And people think, well, it don't really have. It's a foreign country problem. No. You know, there's a, there's a quote there. No, American men are the number one consumers of sex in the world. I, in other words, American men are buying sex from kids more than any other men from any other country in the world. We've got a problem in America uh, with the darkness of our hearts, with the sinfulness of our lives. And basically, revival means repent, turn away from a, a life of sin and from this disgusting darkness. And... And if you need help, go to my website and, and email us. If you've got a problem with some kind of addiction, sexual addiction, anything, we we don't always have the direct services, Casey, but we will help people find the resources. We will point people in the right direction because, uh, because if you want to live a victorious life, a life of hope, a life of purpose, we know in Jeremiah, God talks about, he created each of us for, with a plan and a purpose. And if we, and I believe with all in all my heart, if we don't know the Lord, we never really know what our plan or our purpose is. Yeah. And I tell you what, once you know the Lord, once you know what God wants you to do, man, I ran major league baseball teams, I owned a Ben's dealership, I've vacationed in the best places in the world, I've had the best that the world has to offer. Nothing compares to 
following Jesus and trying to live an obedient life and worshiping him and serving others. Love God with your heart, soul, mind, and spirit and love your neighbor as yourself. It, it's real. It's real now. You don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you, I've had everything and there's nothing compares to walking with Jesus. You sound like uh, Solomon uh, closing uh, Ecclesiastes out. You know, uh, and, and, I mean, that, vanity that is and vanity. Is, yeah, all is vanity. It's all vanity, man. When it, when it, you know, the day that you die, you're taking nothing with you. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Naked you came, naked you shall go. Mm -hmm. The only thing that goes with you, really, is the impact that you left behind. Yes. The lives that, you know, the, the preaching of the gospel, the people that you, you helped, all of that yes. definitely ends up showing up there mm -hmm. because that's what matters. Yep. Nothing else matters. You know, uh, we, we, the comments that some people make, man, and usually the bad comments that people make, it's, it's coming from sideliners. Yeah. It's not people on the field. No. It's people on the bench that aren't doing jack. Yeah. And, and, and that's, those are the, your harshest critics. Those are the ones that, <laughs> And then when you make something really good happen, they go, oh, we knew it all along. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. I, I, that's the world we live in. This cancel culture, that's, that would be an encouragement to, cancer, to your listeners is, uh, is, 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 is don't be afraid of, of being canceled. Yes. I know it's challenging. I know it's hard. And, and, but uh, but you got to stand up for what's right, what you believe is the truth, and, and you'll be blessed for that. Don't mean it's going to always be easy. You know, I think some people think, well, once I come to know Jesus, everything's going to be perfect. There won't be any challenges. Uh, there will be challenges because we live in this world. We're in the flesh, as you mentioned earlier. But but God and, 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 and Jesus will, will be with us through this. He will, right. he will be there always. You know, the Bible says he will never leave us. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he's with us even when we don't know it sometimes That's or right. we think. He's always with us, and he always wants to bless us, and he's always loving us. So uh, there's nothing like like it. I, I, I think about my friends that don't know Jesus, Casey, and I, 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 I sometimes weep for, weep for them. I'm sad for them. They don't, they, they, they're not experiencing uh, the be their best life possible. They're not experiencing what God has for them. And, and, and then I, I know heaven's going to be great. I, I, I'm looking forward to that. As you said earlier, I'm ready to roll out of here yeah. tonight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but while I'm here on earth, every day I wake up, because I'm doing life with Jesus, it's an adventure. It's exciting. That's There's right. some days I mess up and I get angry or I want to do something stupid or be selfish. But uh, but 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 God's with me. And I, I just encourage people, man, no matter where you're at, it, you start reading the Bible and just and, and just ask God to show you, reveal himself to you. I think revival is starting to break out around this country and people are really seeking the truth and seeking to know God. And and uh, it's ex it's an exciting life with, with, with Jesus. It really is. It doesn't always go the way you expect it to go, uh, but it, it usually goes better because you don't know what's happening at that time. God's got something great for you down the road. Right. Once you come out of that storm, yeah. uh, there's there's something special waiting for you. And you, we've got to run wholeheartedly after Jesus, and, and and it works. I'm just telling you, it works. I've I've I've, I've lived it. I know it's true. Uh, so you don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm gonna have you call my wife and <laughs> tell her about the storm. Uh. <laughs> no, probably not. She don't want to talk to my wife. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, in, in preparing for this uh, this this interview, uh, I watched um, Guessing uh, Maxwell, the, the documentary. Of her. <coughs> I, I, I have never sat through a disgusting hour of seeing this woman, along with. Jeffrey Epstein, and along with so many others that have been hidden, you know, it's like nobody wants to talk about the real deal, right? Mm -hmm. But you talk about changing policies, you, you talk about changing laws. It was heartbreaking. I'll tell you what, you know, it was heartbreaking hearing the testimonies of these young ladies that were mm -hmm. being sold. That's what they were, they were being sold for sex. And then at the end of her 
you know, her trial and everything, all she gets is 20 years. To me, that's nothing. You just destroyed lives. Mm -hmm. you've, you've traumatized forever the memory bank of children. Mm -hmm. And not just one, and one's enough. It should be 20 years perfect, though, yes. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But this is where we need to put action. Our yeah. feet need to start moving and getting and making noise. You know, the the, the woke the, the woke that's going on out there, they're loud. Yeah. They're loud and, and they get hurt. Yeah. And I think it's time for the church, the believer, to get loud and strong and go and make these 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 demands to change the laws, mm -hmm. to change policies that are yep. ungodly. Yeah. And really hold people like that accountable. I believe that anybody can come to Christ. Absolutely. Christ died for everyone. But there's also accountability. Mm -hmm. And they need to face justice. They need to be in a courtroom. They need to be sentenced. And when they're sentenced and thrown into prison, let God deal with, with, yeah. with them. And whatever comes out of that, praise God. But that needs to happen. Yeah. And I think that the... the the, the, the slap on the, on the wrist uh, approach to violent crime, to sex crimes, is a joke. It is. It is a joke. What well, we have I'm with. working on it now. You, you remind me of something my mama told me when I was growing up. She said, she called me Webb. Webb, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So, you know, that's why I guess I, you, wow. I talk a lot, you know, because if I'm squeaky, I mean, I'm going to get some grease somewhere along that's the line right. if I keep squeaking. So I've been squeaking my whole life. Uh, sometimes it's for good <laughs> in the past, maybe not always, but, uh, but, but people need to stand up. If there's your life is here, here's the thing, Casey, you just talked you just alluded to it. Every person is made in the image of God. Yeah. When we objectify women, girls or boys by just they're a sex object or they're, or whatever type of object, whatever it is, it, it even even if you don't know God, you have to know that the objectification of a human, another human being is wrong. Whatever it is, if it's whatever you're doing to someone that is not in their best interest, is not helping them. And then, you know, you got a bunch of people out there that, that want to say, well, a lot of these women and a lot of these girls are doing it because they want to do it. They're, they're, pros they're not prostitutes, they're sex trafficking. 92% of all women that are being prostituted in America are being forced to do it. Yeah. They're being trafficked. They're not doing it by choice. Again, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You got about 8% of prostitutes in America that want to decriminalize it, make it legal. And 8% out of 100% of all women being that are in prostitution. So again, it's a squeaky wheel gets a grease, but I really think we as, as a society needs to stand up and, and, and there's different ways to do it. Maybe you don't want to be on, on a soapbox like I am, like you are, like other people we know in different areas, different causes, but you can do it covertly if you need to, but there's a way to be squeaky without you know, you can be squeaky by calling in people, uh, important people that can make a difference by writing them, by, by, by getting involved at your church or in, your, in, a, in, a, in a com some type of community efforts that are out there. But everyone can do something to protect kids, to protect women. And I agree with you. You know, the problem with, uh, with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and, and this piece of scumbag Harvey Weinstein that's in the local... Uh, county, jail. county jail here um, I just my wife always rebukes me and corrects me because I believe uh, I could I could bring in some really good justice yeah. personally and she says you know that's God's role you know uh, that's God's job is to, to deliver justice but uh, but I really think that that people that hurt kids, to me, you've given up all your rights. You, yeah. you, you, you don't deserve any kind, anything. You need to be punished. 100%. And, 100%. and, and justice needs to be served. But the problem we live in America now is no one knows what justice is. No one knows the truth. Is. It, justice is whatever fits that particular DA. We got a joke here in LA. Oh my goodness. This yeah. guy here, 
Gascon. Gascon. He, he needs to be run out of town. You guys kept him in office. This guy, this guy's horrible. He's and, there, and there's a bunch of them all over the country like that. So we the people, we're, hey, Casey, when it gets right down to it, we're voting. Yeah. We're voting all these idiots into positions of power and influence. Look at what, Capitol, what's going on in Washington, D.C. We got a bunch of idiots and a bunch of corrupt you know, I used to travel to third world countries and I still do sometimes, but I used to go down there and I would see like evil and see darkness and see poverty and see corruption. And I'd come back and I'd say, man, I saw the, I, I almost could, I saw the face of the devil because I was in, in abstract poverty and I was in the worst of the worst situations. And then I'd come back to America and then I'd, and I'd say, you know what, it, the, the devil and, and the enemy is still here, but he, 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 he looks different. <coughs> He does, he, he's not in your face. He's kind of subtle in the back. He's dressed up. He, he is not dressed up anymore in, in, in America. No. He is in our face here. This country is as corrupt as any country, and the people aren't being represented, and the people's best interests aren't being protected. We're more worried about everything uh, everything else other than taking care of, of our own people. So we need to take care of, our own, our, of each other because we can't rely on the government to do it. We can't rely on politicians to do it. We got to take care of each other. And, and if you're going to wait for the government to do something for you, you're going to be waiting a long time and you're going to be real disappointed. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Exactly. <laughs> that, they're, they're part of the problem. Yes. Your, 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 your um, foundation, uh, Kids Not For Sale, how close of a relationship do you have with local law enforcement? What is it that you do? Great question. I'm thankful and blessed that I have a very good relationship with Las Vegas Metro PD and the Las Vegas Sheriffs. Uh, the former Sheriff Joe Lombardo is now the governor, which is great. Uh, and we've got four years for him to hopefully get a lot of things right. The new Sheriff is Kevin McMahill, who's a friend of mine. And I've been able to work with Vice, and able to work with. They have the the second best criminal intelligence unit in in America. The best is New York City. What they're doing over there is all. You have a lot of dignitaries, a lot of celebrities, the presidents. You got a lot of people that come to Vegas. So law enforcement needs to be really good at what yeah. they and they are. They care. I'm not going to say, you know, everybody. It, it, you know, there's always some bad yeah. apples in, in the barrel. But so I work with law enforcement as a private citizen, basically finding ways that I can support their efforts. So like when I helped run the Super Bowl anti-human trafficking efforts last year here in Los Angeles, law enforcement does their thing and they go after the, the criminals, but basically the surrounding services, the, the things that they, they, they don't focus on, like once you pick up a, a victim, once you rescue a survivor, there's a lot of help she needs. So making sure people are in place to meet those needs. Uh, and just kind of, I, you know, as a 501c3, I can't lobby per se, yeah. but I can educate to, to, to a degree. So I've done a lot of that on Capitol Hill prior to, uh, to COVID and was able to get President Trump and his administration to change some laws and work with Ivanka and they found resources to help victims and survivors. Uh, so I've done a lot of that in Florida and I've tried to do here in California. It's a hard place to get the right laws passed here. Yeah. But it, this right now going on in Nevada is the uh, legislative session. They, they meet every two years and we have at least five bills that we're trying to get passed uh, regarding human trafficking, uh, child sex trafficking. So I'm going up to Carson City next week. Uh, to 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 meet with uh, Governor Lombardo's uh, folks, uh, I'm going to meet with uh, some state legislators and people in in politics in the government at high levels to make sure that they're going to know what to do and then try to encourage them to do it. So I need a lot of prayer. Next week is a, a big week for me in in basically trying to bring the light into Nevada. And people say, well. Prostitution is legal in Nevada. Well, it's not legal in Las Vegas, which is Clark County. It's it's legal in a couple counties, but primarily throughout the state, it's not legal. It's never legal with children. There's no That's such right. thing as child prostitution. So, so law enforcement is very important. You know, you had a a sheriff here 
that was great, Alex Villanueva, who I met with and got to know a little bit. And he was trying to do the right thing in many ways. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the wrong people uh, figured out a way to get him defeated in the last election. But he was really trying to make a difference. So uh, as I travel the country, Casey, and work with different either sheriff departments or, or police departments, uh, a lot of them are really striving now. A lot of it's technology based. So what a lot of what I do, which I can't really talk about because uh, I don't want the bad guys to know what I'm doing is we're using some really some a lot of private military intelligence folks are now out and they're work, working in the private sector. They have, they have astonishing technical skills yeah. and there's we're able to do a lot of things now to prevent and to catch uh, either traffickers, pimps, and or buyers. So uh, it's a supply and demand issue. People say, you know, w w what needs to happen? Well, if, if men would stop wanting to purchase sex to rape children, that, that's demand, then the supply would, would not necessarily be needed. So I'm trying to get, figure out ways to get men to stop doing this. One of the issues is, 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 it's sad to say, but uh, pornography is a gateway into this. Yeah. And it's not pornography, saying, well, people don't really know what pornography, I'm talking about hardcore, you know, the number one seller of porn now is child pornography. So what men are doing, what I have found out through research and studies is that men start looking at pornography and at, at some point they can't be satisfied what they initially look out. And it's a downward spiral to eventually where they're going downward, it's more more uh, wicked and more dark. They eventually end up to, in child watching child porn. And then what they find out is that a certain percentage of men can no longer be turned on by just watching it. So now they have to, what they've been visualizing, they go in and actualize, they go do it. Yeah. So we have a, a huge problem with pornography in this country, and especially child pornography. I, I, I can't comprehend why men would want to watch kids being sexually abused. I, 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 I can't comprehend that. So my point would be is anybody that's having trouble, I have friends that are fighting pornography. I have friends that have resources and can get people help that are addicted to pornography. It's destroying our country. I get calls from parents around the country. Hey, my son's a sophomore at so-and-so university. He don't really know how to date. Uh, they're in this hookup culture now where you, you you don't really build relationships. You just connect to have sex. And he goes, he can no longer get aroused by a human being. He can only get aroused by looking at by pixels, by looking at something on a screen. We have wow. a generation of young people that that have addiction to porn that are going to struggle in relationships with a real person that can't that don't understand. Uh, what a relationship looks like. How do you court? How do you treat a woman or a guy? And, and, and what all that looks like because they've been inundated with this evil, perverse pornography. They, people, kids, young people think that that's normal watching this crazy porn stuff. That's not, that's no more normal than so. We need to do, and I've got friends. So anybody listening who's got an issue and would like to stop and feels they're addicted to porn, they just can't get away. I've got friends involved in doing that, so so they can reach out to, on one of my websites, and, and I'll get, I'll get the information, and I'll, I'll, I'll either I or someone will reach out to them. But but uh, again, it, that pornography is a huge problem with the mentality and the ac actions of men wanting to pay for sex. I mean, I don't know. Okay, see, it's uh, it's the world I live in, and it's uh, it's uh, ugly. Yeah. And, you know, st statistically, um, most uh, serial murders, um, when you hear their stories, and it is every single one of them is traced back to being addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Ted Bundy, you talk about Richard Ramirez, every single one of them. Yeah. And what people would say, well, pornography is a victimless crime. It's not a victimless crime. If you had... If you had any kind of, of 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 logical thinking or processing, you could do a, just do a little bit of research and find out what happens when you start watching this film, yeah. this garbage, and and you start be leaving these lies. And you so 
people out there that the thing bugs me, Casey. I don't mind somebody that is is well researched, has accurate data, uh, and, and 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 is convicted about something, even if they're wrong. Yeah. They they feel, it. but most people they don't have any facts. No. They don't have any data. They listen to the media. The media is pumping out a bunch of lies because they've got an, an agenda. And I think we uh, we need to stand up for that. And 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 there's the truth. The the, the proper Correct research is available. Porn destroys, and it's a problem. And parents, you need to make sure. Here's a big problem, Casey. I find around the country, a lot of parents will have the will have protection devices on their phones or their or their technology, whatever. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. But they don't have it on their kid their their kids' friends' phones. I'm finding people all over the country that are coming to me and saying, "Hey, we protected you know our kids." We blocked it. We we know what they're doing, but at school, Johnny's little friend comes up and, and they, they they get exposed by their kid by the friends of their kids yeah. to this to this filth. So we as parents have to be protective. You know, we're called to be their parents, not their friends. That's right. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm glad my wife is a lot stronger than me. I'm kind of the, she calls me Disneyland dad sometimes. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but. I don't know. <laughs> as we uh, as we onboard here, um, can you share with us um, how can people reach out to you? Mm -hmm. What's the correct websites, uh, phone numbers mm -hmm. that our listeners can, you know, be proactive in this in this case and, and reach out for either help or teaming up okay. or or sponsoring whatever it is. Okay. There's, there's two websites that, that we have. One, the United States Institute Against Human Trafficking. Uh, we've been around uh, seven years now. It's, it's the, the address is www.usiaht.org. It's, those are the first letters of each of the names, usiaht.org. That's a national organization and we have a lot of trainings, curriculum, uh, you can go on our website and you can, uh, there's different people on there that you can uh, email or there's like info at USI. You, and, or you can call, there's numbers on there to call and I'll get, I'll get either the emails, they'll either, you know, they'll, they'll transfer them to me or calls. And then the one that I focus on in Las Vegas, <coughs> which is, it also, it, it, it also is some, somewhat done here in, in, in California, but primarily the focus is Nevada is www.kidsnotforsale, K-I-D-S-N-O-T-F-O-R-S-A-L-E.org, kidsnotforsale.org. Same deal, you can go on there, there's email addresses and a phone number, and you can call, and either I personally or someone I know, or if it's something specific that my organizations don't do, if it's related to porn, I've got, again, friends that are in that. Back next, not next week, in two weeks, I'm meeting with, with a, a guy that's uh, involved in, 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 in some anti-porn activity uh, uh, operations and stuff. So the help is out there, folks. Don't ever give up. Don't ever feel hopeless. Don't ever feel you, you need to give up. No matter what your challenges are, if it's some sort of addiction, if it's just if it's something you want help with, reach out. If 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 it's not about trafficking or porn, if it's about even something else, we'll 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 do our best to find you help or resources. And it's hey, some of the <clears throat> toughest guys in, on the planet that I know, that I mean, are real warriors. There are times when they're weak. There are times when they need help. All of us sometimes need different types of help. So it's not a sign of weakness. Asking for help or getting help is a sign of strength. That's right. And uh, and I just encourage everyone out there, if you need help or, or need something, reach out to somebody because you, you're valuable. You God loves you. You're you're extremely important. No matter if you've never been told that. No matter if you feel like you're you're worthless. You you have no value. That's a that's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You have value. You've made in the image of God. You have a purpose in life. You, you, there's things that you can do that that no one else can do because you are special in God's eyes and 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 don't ever give up because I've the stories Casey your story we have so many stories of people's lives that have been turned around 
and, and that they're making such a positive difference in the world. So that can be you, whoever's listening, that can be you. And it's the truth. And it's, it's really the truth. Kevin, uh, I'm so uh, grateful that I've got the opportunity to meet you, to have you here on the show. And man, the incredible work that you're doing for the Lord, for these kids. And I'm definitely going to be uh, on that prayer. Thank uh, you. I appreciate uh, it. On a daily basis from here on out uh, for your organization, for you, and for the people that, well, you're rescuing them, the yeah. kids that you're rescuing them. And uh, I I'm so grateful that you made time to, to come here from a busy schedule and join us. Um, thank you. My friend, thank you so much for being here. It's been an honor. I appreciate um, it. Thank you. It's, it's a blessing. So, uh, you know, iron, iron sharpens iron. So we yeah. all uh, can encourage and, 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 and bless others and and, the, and we get a blessing out of it, out of doing that. So so thank you again for having me on your show and uh, uh, I'm excited about all that God's doing in your life. So keep, keep fighting the good fight of faith, my friend. Thank you so much, brother. Amen. With that, um, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. Um, if you want to con continue to sponsor the show, it's very easy, kcds.net. Uh, there's a podcast button there. You click on that, and then it'll lead you to a sponsor button. Once you're there, you can become a monthly sponsor of the show. Thank you so much. Make sure that you're praying for Kevin for um, everything that he's doing. Time to get busy and getting our feet on the ground, boots on the ground, hands busy to stop all human trafficking in America and around the world. We never end the show without telling you, put Jesus first. Till next time, Los Angeles. God bless you.